Two big batteries, but just one hose, wet, dry, doesn't matter. We put this thing to the test. This is the Milwaukee model number 0920-20 if you want the bare tool, or dash 22 if you want the kit, and it's their nine gallon wet dry vacuum. It runs on two of their M18 batteries, and it's 18 volts times two. Um, so yeah, anyway, we'll get to that here in a moment. So let's dive in, take a closer look at this. And by the way, if you think you've seen this review before, I don't think you have. We reviewed its little brother, the single battery unit, the six gallon vacuum, and we're very impressed with that. So now we're gonna do the same with the dual battery. Let's get started. This is the Milwaukee 0920 and uh, 22. If you get the kit with the two batteries, as we see here, also comes the dual charger. We'll go over all that here in a moment. Uh, but a dash 20, obviously, if you just get the bare tool, which is the uh, nine gallon tank and the two battery power head, which with the two batteries that it comes with, with two eight amp hour batteries, you're still going to get over 30 minutes of runtime in high and more than 40 minutes of runtime, almost 50 minutes of runtime in low. So extended runtime is the one or the low and your high performance is going to be your high setting. I think you'll be surprised at even in the low setting of how much power we're driving uh, with this battery powered unit. Now we're gonna take this thing and kind of dissect it down and look at some of the different features. But off the bat, this is equivalent to like a four and a quarter horse shop vac. So getting really near that five horsepower shop vac with a battery powered system, kind of unheard of even you know a year ago or so, uh, being able to pull that much suction with a, uh, with a battery powered unit, as well as getting that extended runtime also. Now let's break this down a little bit and, and we'll show some different features. Um, real quick though, you get the power head, you get the nine gallon tank, um, we'll cover what's inside as well. Uh, you get these two extension wands, as well as a crevice tool and a floor sweep tool. The two eight amp hour batteries, a dual rapid charger, that's gonna charge both your batteries at the same time, uh, as well as the cart here. I think this is a huge perk of the cart. And we get the hose, which is a very durable hose. Again, we'll go over that in a moment as well. I do think there's two things missing, but I will cover that uh, during this review. I'll cover it a little bit later, but I do think there needs to be two more things added to this. But real quickly, let's break this down and take a closer look. Which, by the way, before I, before I go into kind of speeding all this up, this cart, I'm talking like I've used it before. This one I haven't, but we've got the six-gallon version, which is basically this, just a little bit smaller and a single battery kit. But the cart's the same, and this is so easy to use. I'm very thrilled. I mean, you can step on this with your foot, and you can see how easy it is, and lift this up, and, and you pull it loose, and you can... Turn this thing 180 degrees. You don't have to have it a certain way. Very easy to put it back in, slam it down, and it's, and it's locked in. Um, the wheels here are very easy to roll over extension cords or whatever. You can even lock them in place if you need to. So really nice cart that's very hard to tip also. Um, so great addition to this tool is adding that cart. All right, let's break it down. Another great feature. Very simple handle, but large handle that flips up. Very easy to grasp, pull that up and be able to see the unit. Just wanted to quickly show you the underside of this cart, uh, how much it's reinforced, very sturdy, very little flexibility. Even if I grab opposite ends and try to twist this, I can twist it a little bit. It's a very sturdy, well-built cart. Again, you see the, uh, the roller casters, all swivel, four swivel casters, so very easy to maneuver this. And then here on the back side or front side, whatever you wanna make it, uh, you see we have, we're ready for accessories. So one and seven eighths, two and a quarter inch, two and a half, two inch, whatever you have, they're going to fit on there. So you can see, you can grab the right circumference and be able to put your tools on there as you need them. Now we'll take a look at the canister. Pretty simple, empty canister. Uh, we do have this right here, which is where the suction happens, this is where the spout comes in from the hose and dumps into here. And this is also where you would hook up a fleece bag and we'll show you that here in a few moments. Again, this is the nine gallon canister, flip it over and it's not hard plastic on the bottom. Well, it is hard plastic, 
but we also have rubber feet as well. So like sitting on this, I can't just push it around. You can see it's got some grab to it. So it's not just gonna slip and slide. Those rubber feet are going to make contact. Looks like you can also replace those when needed also. Then a large spout here for dumping your wet contents and very easy to do that. As well, back to the cart, you'll see the cart is ambidextrous, meaning we can dump from either side. So wherever we have the spout, um, it doesn't matter. We can flip this around and the spout will align where this recess is. So we've covered the canister, we've covered uh, the cart. Now let's take a look at the power head. We have our place for our two batteries here. We have our power switch. We have a locking hose that goes in here. We'll cover the hose here in just one moment. Flip this around. First, let's take a look right here on the side of the unit on one side, uh, kind of a hose guide. It's gonna help you when you're actually wrapping that hose up. And then on the back side as well, as you wrap that hose around the unit, take this, flip this up and lock that into place right there. So when the hose is on there, it's gonna lock that in there and then very easy just to flip that off and release that hose. And we'll show you that here in one moment. Uh, also love the handle, I mentioned that, just very easy to grab and utilize. Flip this upside down. It comes with the blue high efficiency filter, but they also offer a HEPA filter and a wet dry filter as well. But this, the blue one is the high efficiency filter, but they also have the HEPA that's going to uh, trap even more debris and finer debris. Very easy to put that in, slide it in, turn it, I don't know, about an eighth of a turn if so, and uh, that locks into place and it's ready to go. We also have a rubber seal around the power head that's going to mesh with the container here and seal that up nice and, and dust free, dust tight, water tight, uh, you name it to keep anything from being airborne outside of the power head. Large locking latches here that lock onto either side of the unit as well. Attaching the power head's very simple. Just set it down on it, lock in the sides and you're ready to go. And this is the hose that is a very durable hose very hard to kink. You can see how, how, how tight of a bend I can get before it's even starting to flatten out. About right there it's starting to flatten, but you can see we can really put a tight 180 degree bend on that before it's flattening out at all. Very durable as well, and love the fact that we have locking latches on there. So slide this in, turn it about an eighth of a turn, and it locks, and you see we have the unlock and lock right there. So it tells you which way to turn that but you can figure it out, I promise you. Anyway, just very easy to stick that in there, turn and it locks it into place and you can pull that around wherever you need to. These are the eight amp hour high output batteries. Let's go ahead and slide those in there. And by the way, it will not work with just one battery. It has to run two batteries. So is it really a 36 volt tool? Yes, it's an M18 36 volt tool. So now you're gonna run once we get two batteries in there. And the cool thing is here, kind of showed you this already. So we're gonna take our hose and wrap it around here. And you see it basically wraps around like one and a half times. Take the cord, flip it up there. So we got great hose management. You can clip that in there. So it really keeps things nice and snug and secure. We'll put this back on the cart, flip this around. And by the way, again, if you wanted uh, the suction hose coming out this way, you could easily turn that 180 and lock it into the cart that way. Right here on the back of the cart is where we can put our floor extensions or our hose extensions and our accessories as well. It's a nice, neat, compact unit. Let me show you something else. So right here on the side of the unit, you see these little loops right there, and they're on either side. So two here and two on the other side. What you can buy from Milwaukee as part of their air tip accessory line is you can hook up these guys here and have this bag where it clips onto these little bungee straps, hook onto that, to those loops and secure your air tip accessories. So pretty cool idea that they were kind of thinking ahead and if you're not aware of the air tip stuff, we'll show you a couple of them here in a moment. 
So this is the air tip uh, bag. And then when I flip this up, you can see we have uh, different air tip accessories in here. So a flexible crevice nozzle, which is very handy. We've got some uh, 90 degree bend tools. Um, got little tools that go on to the end of tools. Uh, flexing and locking vacuum. So just some really cool ideas um, in the air tip lineup. Then this crevice tool where you can slide it, where you can unlock it and slide that down and then have some brushes. And then a second compartment down here. We have a powered beater bar. Take your M12 battery, slide it in, turn it on. Now you have a beater bar and even a headlight on there as well to see where you're going. So you're getting all the suction uh, from the 920 vacuum and then you've got the beater bar that's powered separately by the battery and then you can even have some bleed off here. If you're getting too much suction, you can bleed some air off right there to continue that vacuum uh, through that head. So really cool ideas coming from the Milwaukee air tip accessories line. Now, before we get too much further, I did want to cover the dual rapid charger. Uh, there's a big difference in between different chargers that even Milwaukee has. Um, but Milwaukee's chargers compared to other manufacturers, they really make some great chargers, especially when you get to the rapid charger and superchargers. Not only is this a rapid charger, it's a dual rapid charger, and it's a true dual rapid charger. It's going to charge both batteries at the same time. Some battery charges are sequential, meaning it's going to charge this one, and then it will charge that one, and that's great if you can leave it overnight. But when you're really needing to charge those uh, fast, this rapid charger is going to do that. It's going to charge both of those 8.0 batteries at the same time, not waiting on one to finish and then the other. And by the way, so output on this is 18 volts at 6 amps. Now let's cover a couple of more items that you can get. Uh, there, there are a lot of accessories you can get, uh, but some pretty important ones. So here is a HEPA filter. So if you're vacuuming a lot of drywall dust, or maybe you're using this in the automotive realm and and vacuuming up or, or using it for dust extractor on Bondo dust, body filler dust, very fine particulate, you may want to invest in a HEPA filter to definitely make sure that you're trapping as much of that as possible. Another thing is if you're using it for wet areas, I highly recommend the uh, wet application filter. So this is basically just a big old mesh sponge here, so not gonna trap much dust, but it's definitely gonna stop cockroaches and alligators from entering uh, your vacuum. And then uh, the fleece bag. I highly recommend this to everyone, except wet applications. Obviously, you're not going to use that during wet, um, but definitely any other time, invest in a five pack, 20 pack, whatever of these bags and use them. It will just save you tons of time as well as money as well. And I'll show you that here in a moment. And when I said that there were some things missing out of this kit, I felt like that were these two items right here. Now, the HEPA filter, I think that's gonna be great on some occasions. These two, I think, are worth your money out of the gate to have, um, to have that wet application filter when you're needing to clean up a spill or vacuum up water, whatever it is, that's going to be a huge benefit for you when it comes time for that. And then definitely, when you're, it doesn't matter if you're just cleaning up regular dirt, sawdust, whatever. This is going to be a, I shouldn't say a lifesaver for you, but it just really, what this is going to act as, it's going to trap everything and easily clean everything up. And again, I'll show you in a moment. But also, it's going to keep your filter clean. This acts as a pre-filter as well as trapping everything inside it. So basically, your filter is never going to get dirty if you run these fleece bags. Hey, let's get started using this thing. Now, I know we're not going to be able to appease everybody with a big mess, but we've got a little bit of a mess right here in a box. And I think we'll get rid of these long things here. But we'll leave the moss in there. So right now, what we have is our blue high efficiency filter in there, no fleece bag, uh, obviously not the wet filter. So let's crank this thing on low and just see what type of suction we get. Here we go on low. Oh. 
So that's a pretty large piece trying to go through there. Okay, we did have a couple of clogs uh, by the following. I think it was these, these uh, three of these right here, which totally acceptable. I think even a larger two and a half inch hose would still have trouble probably ingesting these. Regardless, I did want to be honest, you know, it did have trouble sucking those through, so we had to dig those out. But again, I would expect that. Um, but as far as picking everything up, plenty of power to do so. It just literally the hose ran out of capacity to be able to swallow all those. Now let's add something to the mix, and this may seem pretty simple, but that's just good old Florida sugar sand. That's what our dirt looks like, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty fine stuff, not near what a drywall dust or a Bondo dust would be, but still wanted to throw some dirt in the mix. And it's less of actually picking this up and more of what I'm gonna show you here in a moment. And also, remind you, we've been on one the whole time. We've been on low. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of wood chips in here as well as some good old Florida sugar sand. And by the way, we still have a full charge on both of these batteries after picking all that up. All right, I want to look at a couple of things. Let me disconnect this hose and we'll pull the power head off. And I just want to show you something. Okay. You saw we dropped a ton of dirt out of this filter already. And now look at this filter. Now you can see we can probably beat on this thing, blow on this thing, vacuum it with another vacuum. And you see the mess that we're getting out of here. So how many uses are you going to get out of this filter before it's just plugged enough to where it's time to replace it. You start, you know, hearing the motor really struggling because it can't pull through anymore and yada, yada, yada. You try to, you know, wash it out, you name it. I get it. You can take care of it, extend the life of it. But at some point you're replacing this filter in it, you know, 20 plus bucks a pop. Those aren't as fun to replace. And like I said, you're, you get all this junk that's going one step closer to the motor and as I mentioned, not only do we have this, we've got that that already dropped out of there as well. So all of this mess here is trying to get into that filter. So what do we do about it? We're gonna put on our nice, pristine, white HEPA filter. Okay, so we've got a dirty vacuum. We've got all of this mess now. Let's dump that back out here. Okay, now here's the change we're going to make. Now we're going to take our fleece bag here, which by the way, this is for the six gallon. I don't have the nine gallons yet, but I'm hoping it will work. And it just easily slides in those rails right there and locks into place. That's it, that's all you do. Slide it all the way in, slide that in until this is flush. It should lay in there just like that. And the snout of that vacuum is gonna fit right in that rubber seal right in that rubber seal right there. Everything lines up, I don't have to do anything. And now I'm ready to go. Now I'm gonna do two things. Number one, I'm gonna put my hose back in, lock that in. We're gonna to go to speed two this time, so we're going to go in high. And we've got all our dirt and everything else that came out of the unit right there in this pile right here. So we're gonna use high speed, and we're gonna suck all this up, and then we're gonna take that back apart and check it out. Get this over here first. Get the remnants of our filter. I'm also going to hook up our floor sweep. Okay, a couple of things. You saw all the dirt mixed in there. In fact, most of it kind of sank to the bottom there. So we picked all that back up. But I don't believe we got clogged, or we get, did, we got clogged once. 
So that tells me something. I think the Venturi effect of a big wide mouth and then focusing everything, kind of creating that Venturi effect into the snout, uh, mitigated any clogs happening and, and helped almost totally eliminate it uh, uh, with the exception of the one clog. But anyway, so highly recommend use a floor sweep when you're vacuuming up big objects like that and it may help in reducing the amount of times you have to actually unclog it. Okay, here's the exciting part. Let's remove our hose and I'll leave the base here, but I'm gonna take off our power head. So there's our filter after vacuuming up all that dirt, all those wood chips and everything else. So it doesn't matter that it's a HEPA filter. Obviously it's filtering better, but this is before the filter. This is where air is coming in. And you see we have zero dust or dirt contaminating that filter. Now, why is that? Because everything is inside this bag right here. So this has not only captured all the junk and saved you from having to clean up even your tub, but it's also filtered it. This is a fleece bag, so all the air is coming in, being filtered through the fleece, and then only the stuff getting past it is actually getting trapped by the filter. And when you go to pull this out, once you pull it out, you can actually slide that over. That covers the mouth, and then it doesn't matter how much dust, it's gonna keep all that dust inside there. It's not gonna come out of there. Now you can throw this away, put in a new fleece bag, and you haven't had to replace, or you haven't even gotten your filter dirty yet. So that's why I highly recommend buying a fleece bag with your Milwaukee vacuum. And then even take a look at this. Now we had it dirty prior to, and we didn't really clean that out with any soap or water, but still you can see how that's not dusty or dirty after that second use. Any dust in there is residual from the first time we used it without the bag. Now let's do one more test. We'll put on our wet filter. Let's try out some water. All right, we've got our wet filter on. Obviously we're not going to use a mess bag with uh, vacuuming up water. Lock on our hose. And we've got a really full bucket of water right here. I don't know, what are we an inch from the top? So can we call that five gallons? Will you agree that with me? I'm, I'm sure that it's probably somewhat short, but anyway, I think you're gonna get the idea. We're gonna turn this thing on low and uh, see if we can't suck all that out and how quick we can suck it out. Let's go. All right, on low. And here we go. Okay, that is com completely dry. Well, it's not like bone dry, but all the water is out of there. I don't know. Took a few seconds, um, but that was on low. Shall we dump it out and try it again? Well, let's try out our drain and see how well we can hit this bucket. I'd say that drains pretty quick. Not bad at all. Okay, this time, same thing. Uh, doesn't look like we lost much water, maybe a few drops. Uh, we're gonna go to speed two or high performance mode, right? So let's give it all she's got. And two, three, two, one. All gone. Wow, that's really all gone. I can shake a few drops out of there, but that's about it. I'd say it does a pretty good job of uh, vacuuming up wet stuff and it holds at least five gallons. Now I'm curious, after all of this, we're still at four bars on all this. So all the testing you've seen, you've seen uh, was on this set of batteries and we haven't changed them or charged them. Um, so we've got virtually f a full charge. We know that's not the case, we've used it. So it's just not down to say 75 or 80% yet. So all of the suction we've done and all the little tests we've done that you've seen on camera have been done on these two batteries with that charge on it. Um, so nothing seeing uh, coming off of that yet. And also, by the way, here's why you want a wet filter. That filter is going to get soaked and this one's made to do so. So definitely get you a wet filter so you don't have to run it without a filter. 
No doubt about it, this Milwaukee M18 times 2 vacuum is no joke. It is a unit. Uh, did very well in our testing. Uh, again, the only thing really was an issue was, was clogging up debris with the huge chunks of 2x4 that we had in there. But other than that, the power to pull it uh, was no joke. And by the way, that was pretty cool that really we noticed a huge difference in using the floor sweep to kind of help guide that stuff and create that Venturi so you're not just using a blunt end to vacuum up stuff. So try that next time. Also, the different air tip accessories. I'm telling you, I showed you some of those. But some great different ideas uh, that Milwaukee has in, in tips of vacuums. In fact, we did a complete kind of review of a lot of those as well. But anyway, this one we're very happy with. The 0920, um, the dual battery unit, just that much more in step and power. Highly recommend that two things. Number one, get a wet filter when you get this. If you're going to get it, go ahead and invest in a wet filter because the first time you use it to suck up something wet, you're going to go, oh my goodness, why didn't I get a filter? And then everyone who buys one of these, and I don't care what type of vacuum you get, if there is a fleece bag option, in fact, I literally, I would not buy a, a shop vacuum, any kind of dust extractor that does not have a fleece bag option. I'm telling you, that is... I'm not going to say the name Game Changer, uh, but anyway, I I'm telling you, this is going to, number one, keep the dust out of the air. Number two, it's going to keep the particulate out of your filter, so it's going to save you on filters, and it's just going to make cleanup just a breeze. And you're not breathing this mess when you're dumping this out of your vacuum, so I highly recommend it. Pricing. Let's talk about pricing. Pricing on this is $299 for the bare unit, so no batteries, no chargers, but everything else, the uh, two extension wands, the, uh, the floor sweep, as well as the crevice tool, uh, the hose, the cart, all that is included. That's for $299, and no batteries or charger. Now, you add the two 8.0 amp hour batteries and the dual rapid charger, and now you're at $699. So, yes, you're adding $400 to that $299 price to get those two batteries and that dual rapid charger just is what it is. That tells you of what batteries cost. You can price the batteries out if you want to buy them a la carte if you want to. The tool itself or the vacuum is going to have a three-year warranty, and then I believe the batteries have a three-year warranty as well. So check it out. We'll have links in the descriptions to both the kit as well as the, uh, as the tool by itself. And by the way, I mentioned in the video um, that runtime was 30 something minutes and 40 something minutes. That is with 12 amp hour batteries. I checked that on the Milwaukee site. So, with the 8 amp hour batteries, you're going to get like 25 minutes of runtime in low and uh, 36 minutes of runtime um, or 25 minutes of runtime in high and 36 minutes of runtime in low with the 8 amp hour battery. So there is a you know 10 minute swing there when you go to the 8 amp hours versus the 12 amp hours. So I wanted to clear that up. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. Hey, if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, did you hate our video? Well, then let us know in the comments why. Have a great day and keep smiling.